Welcome to Behind the Muscle Podcast. Today's guest is an NPC bodybuilder. Today's guest is Jason May. Jason, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. For sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to chop it up with you here, Jason. Um, the first question that I have for you is, who are a few of your favorite bodybuilders of all time? All time, all time. Man, of course, you know, everybody big fan of Ronnie Coleman, the the old school, just get after it mentality. Uh, that's one of something that's, you know, I keep my head down and just go, you know, that's, that's probably my biggest influence was Ronnie Coleman and Dexter Jackson. Cause just, they just get after and work. Excellent, man. Love it. All right. Uh, at what age, uh, did you start lifting weights, Jason? And why did you start lifting weights at that specific age? Uh, that's funny. Uh, at the age of 14, I started lifting weights. So <clears throat> at that age, man, I had a guy that kind of, you know, took me under his wing. It was like, hey, have you ever thought about, you know, lifting weights and stuff like that? I was like, no, not really. And so we went ahead and started working out together. Of course, he was a lot older than I was. And uh, actually, the first time I ever got underneath the squat bar, I squatted 405 and never squatted before. So I was like, I, I'm, I have, a, I think I have something, you know, good going here. That's 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 pretty cool, man. I I'm I'm excited to kind of get a little bit more into your bodybuilding uh, story. But before we do, um, why don't you paint uh, the picture of your childhood just a little bit? It's always kind of fun to figure out where people, uh, you know, kind of where they grew up, what their childhood was like, because obviously uh, that's a huge influence in who we are as adults today. So where'd you grow up? Um, what sports did you play? Um, just paint that picture for, for a couple minutes up to about high school, please. Uh, I grew up in Kansas city, Missouri, uh, mostly, uh, didn't have the best upbringing, uh, you know, no father around for a long time. Kind of had to grow up real quick. Uh, wasn't without, if it wasn't for football and weightlifting, who knows what I would, you know, be doing now, you know, uh, and so, you know, I got into weightlifting and football. Uh, my family, my mom couldn't afford for me to play football. Like Pop Warner, she couldn't afford it. And so I had a coach that actually came and picked me up every day and weighed the fees and took me to practice. Uh, and that's how I got started, really. So um, how, how, was, uh, how was your relationship with your mom? Was she a pretty big positive influence in your life growing up or was it kind of a struggle? Uh, struggled, not really, didn't come to any football games, didn't really come to any events, uh, kind of just, it was all on me type mentality. And so that's kind of, you know, what gave me my drive and motivation was that it was just me. Did, did that, uh, kind of absence of your mom at your games and stuff did that kind of put a little chip on your shoulder when you're younger then? Um, uh, for more, more a chip, yes, but more of internal like I will say internal anger like I had a switch I could flip and I think that's where it goes into weightlifting you know and goes into football and bodybuilding I could just flip that switch and I just go to a different place um so when you were a kid then you know being a football player playing sports and stuff did you have some athletes that you really like looked up to uh in terms of like professional athletes if so who who were some of those athletes uh, I really liked, you know, like, like Ray Lewis, uh, Warren Sapp, just because it's just that, you know, just that nasty attitude, you know, just that, you know, when the, you, and, and, you know, this, when they walked in the field, they flipped that switch. It was, you know, they could be the nicest guy in the world, but when it was time to go, it was time to go. Yeah, for sure, man. Absolutely. Those are two, uh, First ballot Hall of Famers there, uh, definitely, right. uh, definitely beast. Now, um, so what were you thinking about once you kind of got into high school? What were you thinking about in terms of uh, maybe what you want to do when you grew up or career-wise? Were you thinking a, a pro athlete? What, Where was your mindset in high school in regards to, to that? Man, I was actually – the funny story with that is in high school, we had a, a very, very competitive powerlifting team. And we competed nationally – uh, down in Texas, actually against all the schools in the United States. 
Uh, I was actually ranked 42nd in the United States at the age of 16 uh, in powerlifting, pound for pound. Uh, and so I, I didn't know what direction I wanted to go. And, I, you know, of course, I, you know, I had football to fall back on. But, you know, God didn't bless me with real good height. So, you know how it is. Division one, you got to be tall, you know. Uh, and so I actually went to a smaller school, I think, which helped me out. Went to Missouri Valley, which helped me out because it was more of less distractions because it was more of a high school type environment. Uh, but the day that I was going to college, I got an offer from the Junior Olympics overseas to come weightlifting, but I already signed my letter of content to play football. Wow, cool, man. Okay, so I, I don't want you to get like too far into bodybuilding, but you said that at like 14s when you first lifted weights yeah. uh, and, and you know, there was a, a, an older gentleman that kind of had a big influence on you in terms of that. Would you just kind of talk a little bit more about that since you also then got into powerlifting and that seems like, it was a huge maybe outlet for you in high school when you were younger. I, is that fair to say? Oh, it was, it was huge. It, it, it gave me something to look forward to, you know, cause I had nothing to look forward to really, you know? And so I, you know, setting those numbers and setting those goals of uh, in the weight room every week and every, you know, month, that's what was, was accomplishment for me. You know, until that in this day going forward, I still do the exact same thing of pushing the limits when it comes to training. So, so I want you, so that gentleman that kind of introduced you to lifting weights, did he have a pretty big influence then on you when you were younger? Talk about that. A huge, like a father figure. And it's the funny thing is, is I have a, you know, a daughter and son myself now, and I actually ran into him two weeks ago. Uh, and I haven't seen him in, you know, 15 years, you know. And so it's it's, it's it's amazing how the world comes back around. You know, even my high school coach was, was a big influence on me. Yeah. All right. So um, you you go off to college. Uh, what was your college experience like? Did you end up playing football all four years or what, what did what did that uh, how did that unfold? Uh yeah, I played football. I was a starter all four years at a smaller school. Uh, uh, I graduated with an exercise science degree. Uh, the first one ever in my family to graduate with anything. Uh, and so I, that's that's pretty much what I did in, in college. Just graduate, graduated from there and set the weightlifting records in college to, you know, continue to do that in college. But that's pretty much it. Yeah. 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 So why did you want to study exercise science? I mean, did you have a thinking about being a strength and conditioning coach or something, or what, what was your interest in that outside of obviously being an athlete lifting weights yourself? The passion for fitness and helping others. Uh, it just gives me uh, a sense of reward when I help others, when it comes to their goals and what they're trying to do. Uh, then also, I got approached by a, a, a lady that was a manager of a gym when I was in college. She said, Hey, once you get in with college, come back and see me. And we want to give, give you a job as a personal trainer. And so that's where it all started. And I went back to her after I got done with college. Okay, cool, man. Can't, can't get much better yeah. than that. You know, have a job right out of, right out of college. So um, bodybuilding, when, uh, when were you introduced to bodybuilding and, why don't you start unpacking that uh, that story a little bit for us? Uh, I Bill is pretty funny. That was I got inter, I got approached. I wouldn't say introduced. I got approached when I was in college my senior year. I was home for the summer. This huge dude, man. He was like this ripped out of his mind, big old dude. He was like, "Hey, man, like you're super strong. Have you ever thought about doing like bodybuilding?" I was like. No, I never, I like, I like the idea of it, but I never thought about it, no. And he was like, okay, he's like, well, when you get done with school, man, let's, let's, let's just chat it up and see, maybe we could get you ready for a show or something. I was like, cool, like, all right, I thought I'd think about it. And so I get done with school, I end up finding him, and he gets me ready for my first show, right? And he's like, on my meal plan, it was hilarious, on my meal plan, he has 
swordfish, asparagus. I was like, man, dude, what is this? Like, I like I live in Midwest. I have swordfish, right? And so, and so like, I'm over here getting, like, I might gag and trying to eat asparagus. I never ate asparagus in my life. I might gag and try to get this down. But I'm the type of person, like, hey, you tell me to run through a brick wall. You're my coach. I'm going to run through the brick wall. And so, I, you know, I get down and get ready. And it was funny. It was Mr. Kansas. I don't even live in Kansas. I, I use my, my buddy's address, right? And so I end up going there. I end up winning, taking first. Don't know what I'm doing. And the whole time I remember I was posing on stage, I'm looking straight up at the ceiling because I was too afraid to look down at the judges. And so that, that was my first experience of, like, bodybuilding. So uh, you uh, you won your first competition. I mean, did you did you did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy being on stage, flexing, being basically in your underwear? Like a lot of guys, it, it takes a little time for them to kind of warm up to that idea. But what was your experience in terms of did you did you uh, like it or not? That, at first, I was like, man, dude, this is crazy. I'm gonna be on some. I'm gonna be in my drawers on, on the stage in my underwear. But man, once you go through the process. And all the hard work, you don't even think about that. That's the least of your worries is you being in trunks. Like once I was on stage, man, I was like, you know what? I bust my butt. I'm ready to display my hard work. And so I'm like, here, let's let's do it, you know? And so that's that's what I had no issue being on stage. Cool. Cool. All right. Why don't you uh from there then uh unpack your competition history? I mean, uh, maybe just touch on some of your highlight uh victories and uh, I know back in 2019 from your Instagram, you, you competed on the, the national stage a couple of times and uh, placed really high. So just unpack your competition history, uh, Jason, please. Uh, actually, I took some years off because I got, you know, I got married, had some kids or whatever. Uh, but I ended up doing junior nationals and I ended up taking second. I lost by like, by like a point. It was like neck and neck. And uh I didn't know that you had to have your 60 second freestyle pose. And at that time it was in front of Steve Weiberg. And I was like, Holy crap, dude. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. And so I just winged it. Like, you know, and I lost, I didn't, barely lost. Right. And so I was like, all right. And that was at junior nationals. And that's when it was in Chicago. And so what, what I ended up doing that. Was so that ended up doing, uh, that was, uh, 2015. Okay, 2015. Okay, continue. I'm sorry. Yep. No, you're fine. Then I, I took some uh, time off. Uh, then I ended up competing in 2018 is when I actually started getting really back into it pretty heavy. Uh, I did the Omaha Amateur Show. I, I did that uh, actually a couple of times. I think 18 and 19. I won both those overalls. And then I went to, uh, in 2018, I went to North Americans and I ended up taking six at North Americans. Didn't set well with me at all. I th was pretty upset because I don't place like that. That's just, that's not me. And then I came, then I came back the following year in 2019. So 2019, I was a heavyweight. I kept killing myself trying to make heavyweights, right? Like to the point where I was having like allergic reaction to food because I was like just you know going dieting too hard. Uh, so I ended up squeezing in the heavyweight class at North Americans. It was funny, I weighed in like a 225 on the dot, and then you know, at North, at North Americans, you can weigh in on Tuesday and you don't compete till Friday at that time. It was like finished Friday, so I ended up weighing in at 225 and I competed at 242. So I was kind of I know, stuck out like a sore thumb, right? And so I ended up taking fourth at North America. It was it was neck and neck between us and the three other guys. Uh, and then I was like, my buddy that was coaching me, he was is actually Nick Langer. He was coaching me at the time, and uh, he was like, "Man, screw it, dude. Let's go. Let's go to nationals. Eleven more weeks." I was like, "Dude, eleven more weeks of dieting." And so we end up doing it, whatever, right? And so I wait. Remember, I waited at two twenty four at North Americans. So I go to nationals. I weigh in at two fifty one. 
right? And so I ended up placing fifth. It was Brett, me, Brett Swanson, Nate Spears, all of us in 2019. And so that's kind of like where my highlights were when it, when it came to competing. I tried to compete during COVID, worst idea ever. I stopped, I died it myself away. I had to stop dying like five, five times. So, um, so, uh, Nick, uh, he just won junior nationals earlier this year and he's, he's been a, a guest on the podcast. So, um, how did you connect with him? Was it just kind of a, a Midwest connection or how did you guys hook up and, uh, he started yeah, actually, coaching you? We actually, when I did junior nationals in 2015, we actually, was with the, we was with the same coach. I was with Matt Porter for four years. Uh, and he was with Porter too. And so that's how me and him connected together was through Porter. Okay, cool. So um, why don't we talk about your current coach, uh, Matt Jansen? When did you start working with him? And then why did you uh, decide you were going to uh, go with, with Matt? So my biggest thing is I have – so I did – you know, in 2019 I did well. But I have yet hit my – my mark yet when it comes to my full potential of what I can bring on stage and being a larger guy. And I know what Matt can do when it comes to bigger guys drew me to Matt and his mentality on how he handles himself and, and, and his business and uh, just life in general. And so I reached out to him after I did the Omaha show, which I, you know, I won my class, whatever the Omaha show I reached out. And he's, of course, wanting to take me on, but he's like, give me a, he's like, do me a favor. He's like, I already have prior commitments to other athletes. Take, give me a full year of off season. So last year I took completely the whole year off, didn't compete at all, which it, it, it was good for me mentally. It gave me time with my wife. It gave me time with my kids, whatever. And, and I just focused on lifting. And so the year goes around and me and Matt's like, okay, let's, let's do North Americans. I was like, all right, let's do North, you know, let's do North Americans. And so a totally different approach than any coach I've been with, than, you know, with, with, with Jensen now, uh, a lot more, of course, a lot more cardio than what I'm used to, but that's, you know, whatever gets the job done, I'm perfectly, does not bother me at all. Uh, very, very great communication, uh, but you know I I can't say nothing bad about his coaching. He's very he's very intuitive. Uh, just a great guy. Yeah, I mean he he turns people pro uh, um, right and left. So uh, I I uh, I think he probably made the right choice. Now, um, in terms of uh, this prep, uh, how much cardio are we talking that you've you've been up to? What's the been the <laughs> high point? Two hours. Two hours. Do you do that like an hour in the morning fasted, hour later after your session, or what does it look like? Uh, hour fasted in the morning, an hour at night. Okay, cool. Yeah. And how? What's your uh, What's your training look like? What's kind of your philosophy for yourself? Have you adopted some of Matt's uh, philosophy, or is it kind of uh, one and the same? Yeah. Uh, at the beginning, I kind of was doing my own type of training. Uh, of course, when he first, when we first started talking to each other, he's like, I'm not, he, he flat out told me, he's like, I'm not a yes man. He's like, you have a good physique and I'm going to Nick pick you to death. Mm -hmm. And so don't take it personal. Like, you know, like I don't like your physique, but this, I'm, I, you could be so much better. And so he still does it to this day. Uh, so I let him go ahead and just, he wrote me a program. I've been doing that program ever since then and just, you know, progressing on that program and sending him videos and he's been correcting everything that when it comes to my training, uh, pretty much he, he runs the whole reign. Um, so what are some of those areas that Matt wanted you to, to bring up then? What have you been really focusing on with your training? Uh, my back uh he wanted more back thickness and more width uh and that was the actual feedback i got from steve weinberg at nationals in 2019 was he said i had everything 
all the tools to be a pro. I just need a little bit more back thickness and width. And so Matt, you know, without even knowing that, he spotted that out from the get-go. And of course, uh, conditioning, he's known for being, you know, bringing in people conditioned. And so that's something that I, I want to hit is my condition. Um, in terms of the, the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, back thickness and width, what are some of the movements that you've really focused on with that, Jason? Uh, I have done a lot of uh, – it's weird because like you know like you know like you think like real heavy like barbell rows and reverse grip rows all that i kind of want a different approach of controlling everything and slowing everything down and not so focused on the weight and by doing that we added a lot more detail a lot more density to my back of course, I can look heavy, but it doesn't sound like I, I get any benefit out of doing that. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, if you uh, pay attention to Matt Jansen's athletes that he uh, trains, I mean, you 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 see exactly what you're saying. Everything is slow. It's controlled. It's mind to muscle connection. So that that definitely yeah. makes sense. So um, let's uh, before we kind of get any further, um, let's talk business. You uh, are the owner of Flex Fitness Gym. So uh, when did you uh, open that gym or when did you buy that gym? Talk to us a little bit about that, please. Uh, so that that's so that gym is I would been open for so I go back when so when I so when I was a trainer, I trained for like 12 years, 13 years, whatever it was. And I was I was an independent contractor at the time. I was paying all this money every month, like it was crazy amount of money. I was like, man, I know I could open my own little spot and, and pay this as rent. And so literally I started out with medicine balls, stability balls and bands. That's all I had. Uh, and I literally built it from the ground up. And so I started out with like a 1200 square foot studio Then I went to a 2600 square foot gym. Now I'm at a 10,000 square foot gym uh, that I that I built from the ground up. And so I've hand selected every single piece of equipment that's in the gym. Uh, you can see on the Instagram, all that. Like I'm, I'm always adding new equipment, switching everything out. Uh, it's, it's pretty well known when, on Instagram when it comes from people from out of state coming in to Flex Fitness. Yeah. And is that located in Kansas City, Missouri then? Yeah. Yeah. Right. in North Kansas city. Yes. Okay. What, uh, so, so what year did you, the, the space that you're in right now, what year did you move into that, uh, 10,000 square foot space? Uh, so I moved into it. I'm going to be at two years in October, but when I moved into it, it was only, it was only 5,000 square feet. I had an additional build out of an additional 5,000 after one year. Wow. And then, so I made 10,000 square feet in, in two years. Very cool. Now um, I'm assuming that you probably have uh, like trainers like underneath you now and you kind of just oversee the operations or how does that work? Uh, we're a 24 hour gym. Uh, we have a couple of independent contractor trainers uh, like Ty Jordan's one of our trainers. Uh, 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 and so we, they just pay me a monthly rent and it runs its honestly, man, the way I built it, it runs itself. Like I don't have to be there to run it. It runs itself. I have cameras everywhere. Of course, uh, you can't get into the door unless you uh, have the app to get into the door. And so it's pretty, it's pretty self-efficient. Excellent, man. That's, it's a great way to run business. You can have the business uh, make money for you and you don't even have to be there. That's it's right. Awesome. Right. So um, now in terms of the gym, uh, and, and just kind of being a personal trainer for so many years and, and being a business owner, what are some life lessons or just lessons in general that you've kind of learned through being a business owner? Because, uh, if you haven't owned a business, you, you really don't know. <laughs> so what, what are some things you've learned from owning a, owning a business? You represent your business is the biggest thing that I have learned is that people will follow you as a leader if you re live that lifestyle and you represent that lifestyle. 
Uh, and that's one of the things that the members pride on me and my wife is that we're always there where most gym owners, you never see them. I train there. And of course I train hard. They see that too. Uh, but we always ask in their opinion on what pieces they want to see next. Is there anything that we can do to improve the gym? Uh, and so we're very, very, almost like a family type atmosphere that motivates people. And, and it's, I don't know if you've seen pictures of it, but as soon as you walk in, it's like you got graffiti on the wall. And it's and like, I have all the, I just got done like two weeks ago or a week ago. I have all the six bodybuilders that passed away, like huge on the leg side done. I got Hunter LeBrotter on the wall. He came in, he came down and signed the wall and hung out for a weekend. Uh, but it's just, it's the atmosphere that we have created in that coat, in that gym that is one of a kind. You can't, there's no other gym like it. Is, uh, is what's the bodybuilding scene like down there in Kansas city? It's, there's some pretty, uh, pretty big competitions, like amateur wise in that area, isn't there? Uh, man, honestly, when COVID hit, it hit Kansas city pretty bad when it came to competing. We haven't had an actual Kansas City show since COVID. We, we're having our first one. Uh, Chad Nichols is putting it on. Our first one, I think, is in November, and it's the All-Stars. The, other than that, it's been in, like, the Omaha or uh, Arkansas. Like, those have been the closest places to compete. Okay. Um. So let's uh, let's get back into um, North American uh, yeah. prep here. Now, um, what show did you uh, uh, qualify for North Americans this year? Did you compete earlier this year or what? Uh, no, I was I wanted to compete, but Matt Matt told me no. He said yeah. He's like, no, we're not competing. We don't need to. And so I qualified off the Omaha show last year. Oh, I see. Okay, perfect. Uh, he, I was like, what about a warm-up show? He's like, why? We don't need to do a warm-up show, warm show. So I didn't get to do one. Okay, perfect. All right. So uh, how many weeks out did you start prep for North Americans? At 20 weeks. Okay. Um, and then, so what is your uh, what is your individual goal? What would you like to accomplish at North Americans this year in the super heavyweight division? Of course, the pro card, man. I, I feel that I have all the tools to get the pro to be to win. Uh, I think if I know, which I know we will know our conditioning and I, my glutes and everything are already in. Uh, he, we posted some recent pictures yesterday in the gym. Uh, so pretty much everything is already there. Uh, I'm, I was still a little flat. Just, just the filming out process, it still has to happen. But, you know, that's how it works. But if we, I feel if we nail that, I should be pretty hard to beat because you don't see very, very many supers with small waist. And, my, and I have a pretty small waist for a super. Uh, and so I just think, and I have the muscle density. And so I just pretty balanced. And so I just think, you know, that this, it'd just be hard to beat, you know. You, you, I'm assuming you probably want to get the overall as well, right? Yeah, of course. I, I, I don't compete to compete. I compete to win, right? Yep, for sure. No, I, I, I assume that. I just, I, I got to ask those questions because, you know, sometimes people will beat around the bush with me. Some people are straightforward and uh, you got to, you got to get it out there, right? A hundred percent. I'm, you know, I could, be, anything that I do in life when it comes to, business life in general i do 100 percent, and so and i expect to get 100 percent result result at the end of the day and so i've done i have literally diet for i don't know how many years and never skipped a meal i haven't missed a workout i don't take time off i diet 300 i diet 365 days every year like i don't miss a day and so for me I have, you know, crossed my T's and dyed my eyes, And so, I, you know, we know my conditioning. Uh, I'll get the overall. Cool. Awesome, man. So um, what are your thoughts then uh, when you get the IFBB pro card? What are your thoughts uh, going forward? What would you like to accomplish as a pro bodybuilder before your time is up competing? Uh, that would be something I would discuss with Matt and what his vision is. Uh 
you know, I'm going to stay with Matt, you know, even, even whatever the outcome is after this show. Uh, I'm not, I don't like, I don't jump coaches because something didn't go right or whatever, you know? Uh, and so we we'll figure out whatever the next step is I need to do to improve, to get better. And we, and we'll go from there. Do you, do you have like a long-term goal though for competing before it's all? Uh, oh yeah. I would like to do a pro show, you know, and just, just get even, you know, of course, just do like a pro show and I'll, you know, I'll be satisfied a hundred percent. Cool. Awesome, man. Um, let's talk about uh, fatherhood for, just for, for, uh, for a second. A lot of the guys I've had on recently are really young. They don't have kids yet. Um, I'm assuming that's a, a pretty big focal point in your life. And how did having your first child kind of alter or change your life? It, 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 it put life in perspective, I would say, when it comes to what's important. Uh, it's, you know, you know, and bodybuilding is, is a very selfish sport, you know, and it's about you for 20 weeks or you for whatever. And so my kids, they, they grew up, they grew up around it. You know, that's all they know. And it's funny because, you know, we go out in public and everybody, of course, is like, oh, man, look how big this guy is. And my son's like, Dad, why, why are they always talking about you? So he's, you know, he's used to it, you know. And so uh, it is, it's just hard when it comes to not being able to go out to eat with them. We don't go, like, we have about to eat in 20 weeks, you know. We, it's, it's, you make a lot of sacrifices. And so, you know, with the kids, it's just, even when I'm dead tired, I said I'd take them to karate, football practice, and stuff like that. So that commitment never changes. Right. What's uh, what's what are uh, uh, what are some values or a couple of values that you'd like to instill in your kids or pass along to them that maybe you didn't have until you were you were older? Because obviously you didn't have that uh, you know parental uh, guidance like like you're giving your kids. Uh, man, I'm I'm there everything. Mm-hmm. Like I don't miss, like I don't miss nothing, you know. It's you know, I could be, you know, on my deathbed, I'll be there. And so for them, you know, they, I still in them that you you never give up, you know, even when times are hard, you know. And so I'm very given when it comes to them because I didn't have anything, and so you know they get a lot. They they're, they're spoiled. They didn't, they, they've been to Hawaii for Christmas and all that good stuff. And so, which I never, you know, got to experience that. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Um, all right. We're going to start heading towards the finish line here, wrapping up our conversation, Jason, uh, in terms of bodybuilding, you know, uh, what do you feel like bodybuilding has taught you or what do you feel like bodybuilding has given you? Uh, it's beyond bodybuilding. It's, bodybuilding is yes getting on stage is is fun it's entertaining but it's it's the self-discipline that it teaches you in life and the in like when in the mentality of this when things are hard you still can go forward you know because you know how it is when it's like when you're zero tired but i still got to get up at you know 3 a.m and be at work at 5 a.m to train people i still do that regardless and so like it's just it's just the, the mentality of of the t- mental toughness that bodybuilding teaches you i think it's the honestly i think it's the, the when it comes to sports wise mental toughness it's by far the most mental toughness sport out there football is mental tough like you get ran or you get ran all day yeah okay it's done at the end of the day. You go home, eat a pizza, and call it good, right? Here, it's like I get up at 3 a.m., hour of cardio, eat my first meal, go train at 5, keep training till 10, then I work out. Then that's, that's my every day. It's every day. And so for me, it's just like with no carbs, nothing, and still being able to stay on track, man, you, you got to have some mental toughness. Because uh, most people, what they do, you, you catch them cheating on their diet or they start, you know, having mental breakdowns or they, or, they, or they call their coach and say, I can't do this anymore, which Matt can, Matt can speak for myself, Matt can speak for me. I'm a yes man. I never complain. I say, yes, I get it done and I get it done. 100% man. 
Um, what's something uh, about bodybuilding or the bodybuilding culture right now that you don't like? Uh, man, I, it, it's the, it's the, it's the, I hate to say it, but it's the Instagram bodybuilders, man. It, it's just, there's so many people that this is like, that's why nobody knew about me doing North Americans because I let my body do the talking when I show up. So I don't sit there and hype myself up, talk about how great I am, what I'm going to do. And then when I get to the show, I bomb the show I look, and I look bad. And I think there's so much that goes on nowadays that, you know, they post their best angle pictures on Instagram. when They just got a pump. And so, like, I don't even look at any, any, any of that, you know. And so I'm like, you know, as I work out with a sweatshirt and sweatpants on. Like I, the first time I saw myself with a pump was yesterday when I sent Matt those pictures. So, and at, at that day, I still, that still was no pump because I still don't have any, I had still barely any food, you know? Uh, fun, a couple of fun questions here for you. What's your biggest gym pet peeve? Not re racking your weight. <laughs> Dude, it, it, it I, it, it, I when I first opened a gym, it gave me anxiety. It it did. Like it was bad. Like now I'm to the point now where I'm like, I'm gonna charge you a dollar per pound. Like I'm I'm about to be rich because I'm gonna charge you a dollar pound. Yeah. And so yeah, and like that's that and just being uh courtesy being courtesy of other people around you and their in their space and their time. If you're not there to train. Go go to I hate to say it, but go to Planet Fitness. Go to G Genesis. Oh. Do you, uh, do you allow uh, uh, like uh, cameras and stuff like that in your phone, the tripods, or is that uh, a no go? Yeah. They do, they do. That's at the end of the day, we, we I did have some bodybuilders are like, man, Jay, why are you with all these tripods in here? And I'm like, you think about it though, that's free marketing. Like I don't have to, they post it on Instagram and it markets. And so, like, all, like honestly, all our marketing has been solely just off Instagram. I have not paid one company to do any marketing, and we have over fifteen hundred members. Yeah. So, just think about if I was to pay a company, you know, who knows? But the thing is, we're about to hit fifteen hundred. I'm about to close the memberships off because I want a family type gym, and I want our gym equipment to be taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that makes sense. Um, in terms of a meal that's off your current uh, regimen for this prep, uh, once the show's over, are you looking forward to having anything, pizza or ice cream or anything like that, or are you just going to stay right on right on diet? You're, you're going to laugh at this one, man. Uh, a bowl of cream of rice, man. I, I haven't had cream of rice in over a year. Like, it's been our oatmeal, you know. Like, I'm a very – I when it comes to my cheat meals – it's my cheat meal is sushi and that's what i bought sushi or i go to a burger with no cheese and sweet potato fries that's the far as i go you know right people don't really say that's a cheat meal but you know that's a cheat meal for me you know yeah for sure man for sure um all right uh jason um we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here man uh First of all, I just want to say thanks for coming on. I know you're deep into prep, like all the guys I'm bringing on this weekend. So thanks for taking some time out of your busy schedule to chat with myself and everybody that subscribes and uh, listens to the podcast. I, I really appreciate it. Um, before I do a quick outro, um, if you have any final shout out sponsors, anything like that, any final thoughts, any final words, I'm going to turn it over to you. Then I'll do a quick outro and that'll be a wrap. Uh, this is a shout out to our gym, you know, Flex Fitness. Uh without that family and, and that, in that, uh, that culture, you know, it is, it will be hard for us to do what we do, you know, uh, then also shot to just Matt, man, just my coach, you know, and, and we're going to bring it. That's, that's all I can say is, you know, I'm, I'm doing everything I can in my power to bring the best that I can bring. And I let the cards unfold, you know? And so, but, but, bet you know whoever it is we're gonna work we'll be on stage for a while so yeah it's gonna it's gonna be a pretty uh competitive class the super heavies i think so you should be excited to be up there with some 
some uh, legit competition, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. All right, Jason. Uh, again, thanks for coming on. Uh, all of you who are tuning in to another awesome episode of Behind the Muscle Podcast, thank you so much. I appreciate and value all of you. Uh, quickly, as we wrap up this conversation with Jason, if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button on YouTube. That's really important because I release all these episodes first on YouTube, and then I'll distribute them to iTunes, CastBox, Podbean, and some of the other major podcast platforms. So if you have not subscribed to BTM on YouTube, please do that right now. Also, one other favor before we wrap up, uh, take this episode with uh, Jason, share it on your Instagram stories. Make sure you tag Jason, tag his gym, tag Matt Jansen, and tag Behind the Muscle Podcast so that we know that you listen specifically to this episode and found great value in it, in which I know you did. Um, also, why don't you go ahead, if you are not following Jason right now, go on to his Instagram, give him a follow, give him some support in these last few days as he closes out this prep for North Americans. And then finally, I will leave you all with this. Remember, behind the muscle, there's always a story. We'll catch you guys later.